Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Call to Arms Gates of Hell Osfron, except this is the Hot Mod 1968 edition, with a couple extra mods linked below in the description. This is the second video where I have to do a voiceover, as unfortunately the microphone on this one was corrupt. So episode 5 and 6 are the only two videos that I have to do these voiceovers. The rest of the series is already recorded and I've checked the audio on them and they should be fine. Anyways, I've cut out a lot of this video just to make the voiceover a lot much easier. So this is a very short video. Let me know what you think about the shortness, um, how much of the pre-game you all enjoy. Personally, I like it, but it might not be everybody's cup of tea. Anyways, here we are defending an airbase and... I can't stress this enough, this is the Alter 71 mod map pack, and these maps are absolutely beautiful. They have assets that are based on the original game, but it's all designed and new for essentially the Cold War era, and they just make this mod or this, um, this era so much better to fight on instead of fighting with cold war assets in you know world war ii maps you're actually fighting on maps that make you think that you are in the correct era in this battle we do have t-64s which is pretty awesome the chinese they don't ha really have anything yet that can compute the t-64 and just as a future spoiler I don't go past the T-64 because I find out that the Chinese really don't have anything that can truly deal with a tank that would be better than the T-64, and I just make that executive decision in this campaign that um, I kind of want battles that are are fun and interesting. The it, Some people really enjoy just stomping on the enemy. Um, I enjoy winning, of course, but I do like it when the enemy can punch back. I feel like they're much more engaging battles. The Chinese should be attacking any moment now. I am just adding the final touches to my uh, defense. And here you see on the mini-map, there is some contact, and now you can hear the fire going off. I wasn't entirely sure exactly where the Chinese would come from. But I think I guess pretty well. They definitely push down the center. And this map has a lot of blind spots to defend. Um, if you notice here, here I am individually placing my troops in foxholes. There's just a couple coding issues here and there. Um, they just need to get worked out on the modder's side. But in the base game, troops don't like to sit in the foxholes anyways. So missing out on a lot of combat here as I, you know, move the final touches around. But as you can see in the kill feed, they are just sending waves upon waves of infantry at us, and we are just mowing them down. I have an SD-152 sort of in that right flank. You can see it on the right side in between those two buildings. Over here I have a bunch of infantry, and I don't think they're backed up by any tanks, but they're backed up by this mortar crew in here. These infantry do take a beating throughout the fight. They are sort of my... <laughs> they, are, they are my front line, and they get hit really hard. Sort of let you soak in some of the noises there. I absolutely love the noises of the core game in this uh, Cold War mod, but I always find Mortar Fire to be extremely satisfying. You can see that the Chinese there making a huge push through my center as I'm trying to move troops into trenches, and I'm not sure that I notice those troops rolling through my lines. So here we have the next call, and looks like it's our older version T10s, and I notice that they are just swarming on through, so I need to bolster that center point, 
and realize I probably have a gap in my line over there. The T10s, they're not incredibly fast, but they're they're phenomenal against infantry. They just the HE round that they shoot is uh, if you watch the series, you'll just see how much work the T10s do against infantry and man-packed weapons. Tiny little lull in the battle. I do wish on defensive missions that it was a li little bit more of a steady stream of enemies coming in. Um, but then again, sometimes it's fun to have a little lull. And maybe historically it makes sense, you know, the enemy's first wave got be beaten back, so now they have to regroup for a second wave. Um, it would be nice if that second wave wasn't just a small little infantry push right away, if it was, you know, combined arms, infantry, and tanks. I think I say this multiple times in this campaign, but when I do another Cold War, I will definitely do USSR versus the United States. I think that creates a more balanced, um, a, a, a more balanced campaign. The, the equipment's more on par with each other. I feel like the Chinese tier tree is a little lackluster. I've also noticed that they just use tons and tons of infantry and um i mean that's fine but you'll see that i just i, I constantly outgun the chinese with t10s t64s my leftover pt76s it's um it's pretty gross i mean these infantry just keep running across i've taken plenty of casualties don't get me wrong there but it's When you lose infantry, it, it doesn't really sting. Whereas when you lose your tanks, you, you feel it. Um, here we go, some of our tanks screwing up on their pathfinding. Not really sure what's going on here. Sometimes the pathfinding in this game is a little bit maddening, and I believe this was after a patch where the developers of the core game just absolutely broke pathfinding and they had to push out a a patch to fix the pathfinding um you'll watch in some of my german series where trucks just do maddening things in this one one of my trucks randomly flipped over in the middle of the airstrip and you'll see me later trying to fix a truck uh in a very technical manner. Super, super technical, super advanced. Not really sure why infantry got off their mortar there, but now we have a ZSU-57-2 in the middle, and I absolutely love these things. If there is one reason to play Cold War era to me, that's, you know, outside of the the modern tanks and possibility of helicopters it is the anti-aircraft weapons i in world war ii i absolutely love the um i believe it's the ostwind and the verbal wind for the germans in the cold war era things like the zsu 57-2 and the shulka are just amazing here's another error my recoilless team just they can't move their rifle. I don't know why. See on the kill feed, the T10. I believe that's the T10. Just absolutely blasted a bunch of infantry. It might have been a T64. You can see enemy armor is moving forward. So I'm repositioning my T10. Not really sure what to do about that little gun here. Um, this middle is getting absolutely obliterated. I reinforce it with a T10. Hopefully that fixes a lot of issues. The 57-2 is also moving up to reinforce because I can tell that the Chinese are just trying to exploit this part of our defensive line 
and that that part of our defensive line might be a little a little weak. You can see that there are just tons of casualties there, and I think I've lost a lot of medics trying to rescue them. I don't think at this point in the series I understand that um, while you can shift-click medics to heal people, you can also shift-click a final order to have them run back into cover, and that's something I highly recommend is you send out your medic, go rescue somebody, and then have them come back to a safe spot. Uh, too often you send your medic out, you forget about him, and then he dies. So enemy armor in the distance, RT-64 is engaging it. Pretty interesting noises there from the autoloader. Um, RT-64, however, and throughout the entire series, I feel like its accuracy is pretty terrible. And I'm not sure if that's an oversight or not. As you can see, we've missed about five shots in a row. Or potentially those were overpens, I just realized. Um, they bailed out of their... Is an IS-2? The ZSU-57-2, such amazing noises firing out of it. I will note the T-64 is not part of the Hot Mod 1968. It is part of the West 81 submod. The West 81 submod still needs a lot of work in terms of noises, um, some of the mechanics of the vehicles. Definitely brings a whole new power level to the game. I think the next time I play one of these, I will probably do just Hot Mod 1968 and then the Alter 71 map. And then later I might try another West 81 uh, with all the crazy equipment. I mean, we get Abrams, all sorts. That is a very suicidal little armored fighting vehicle moving forward. Yeah, as you can hear, the T-64's machine gun is very dull versus the T-10's machine gun, which is very prominent. My PT-76 was knocked out. I'm not exactly sure what hit it. I'm wondering if an uh, ATGM hit it. Or no, actually, I see a big gun out there, so probably that big gun hit our PT-76. You can see it on the mini-map. Uh, one thing I really like that... I don't know which mod does this, so I'll have to figure out which one. But the symbols are changed, and I think the symbols are a lot more intuitive than they are in the base game. It's just reinforcing that center point here. Very cool looking armored fighting vehicle. I'm not very familiar with Chinese equipment. Um, I know in this game there's a lot of Russian equipment that the Chinese have. Big infantry swarm there. Once again, there's their um, the machine gun that is very, very quiet on the T-64. You can just hear the difference there. The, the T-64... I mean, T-64 has a bigger machine gun. Or, sorry. The T-10 has a bigger machine gun, but the T-64's machine gun sounds very muffled. That guy's having a bad day, screaming in the forest. This battle's sort of winding down. This is a very short episode, um, mainly because of my audio issues on this and just cutting it down to something where I could actually provide meaningful voiceovers. Here you can see the T-64. I absolutely love the camouflage pattern on it has those interesting um, applique armor panels that they sort of catch um, RPG rounds or ETGM and 
it's supposed to cause the round to prematurely detonate. Whether they work or not is a completely different story. But I really like how the T-64s look. I think they did a good job. So as far as the enemy armor, I think really all we saw was an IS-2 and then a bunch of armored fighting vehicles. I'll say this, I, I'm on... I'm on hardcore battle difficulty and a hard economy. I don't know if the economy makes any difference. I got a hit on my ISC 152, probably with an RPG. Pretty, pretty cool on their part. There they are running through the gap. I think they went into the factory. I'm not entirely sure. My marksman did a really poor job defending my ISC 152. And so now I'm moving them over. I think I realize that they're actually in a bad spot. The enemy infantry are absolutely phenomenal at finding the tiniest gaps in your line and pushing through them. So I think now things are really quieting down. Um, Absolutely love the marksman team. They are Spetsnaz, and their rifle is awesome. Comes with a spotter and a marksman, so a guy with binoculars. And the marksman is absolutely phenomenal. That gun is just so late to the party, and it will be blasted. I think there's a small little infantry push. Yep, there's that gun blasted. Uh, maybe I was just seeing things for the infantry. There's the remains of that gun, whatever it was. Oh, no, I wasn't seeing things. There are some infantry pushing through. I look, I watch the minimap a lot. Um, mainly, I don't use silhouettes, so it's a lot more difficult to see things. That being said, you troops see them. There's an argument for and against, against silhouettes. I just, I don't use them. I, I like, I like having the troops camouflaged on the battlefield. But that being said, I do use the mini map a lot. The mini map is definitely my primary eyes. That infantry, you almost feel bad for them at this point. I mean, they are the last infantry on the battlefield, and they just get blasted. Anyways, here's the technical way to flip over a truck. Uh, you just grab a PT-76 and you ram it enough until it tips over. I mean, the truck will be fine, right? Here's me looking through the battlefield. Absolutely beautiful assets on there. And this helicopter, I mean, it looks a little rusty. That's for sure, but you can see the battlefield, you can see the smoke in the distance, and that is the battle, so pretty good defensive mission. Really just lost a bunch of infantry in the center, and not much else. This was basically a one-sided massacre, unfortunately. Um, I would really like... I, I feel like I wasn't pushed a lot in this campaign with the difficulty of the enemy. In World War II era, the enemy just sends waves upon waves of tanks at you, and it feels overwhelming. I, I didn't feel that in this, so maybe I'll have to try it without the Alter 71 map pack, but boy do I love those maps. So here's just the uh, research tree. I've shown this off before. It is intimidating at first, but once you start understanding it, it makes a lot of sense, and... You can see me looking through some of the captured equipment um, and then deleting it because we don't need it. 
really we just want the resources uh some of the things in this mod are really really expensive so you do have to figure out your resources a little bit better um until of course you get to the snowball point but there's me just deleting a bunch of the chinese equipment that i've captured over time also mentioned that some of the items have placeholders but that is sort of the army at this point but i think that's where we will cut off this episode once again i apologize for episodes five and six where my microphone audio was absolute crap and i had to do a voiceover i have rectified that and every episode from here on should have the normal audio and the live impressions of what is going on if you all have made it this far i greatly appreciate you all let me know what you think in the comments below uh this series should be pushing out a little bit quicker now that i have pushed through episode five and six so as always guys until next time if you enjoyed this content and would like to see more please like subscribe and comment below